Welcome to this Minecraft tutorial. Really what I'm talking about today is uh, stepwise thinking and how you can break something down. So we all know and love Minecraft, but it's a big 3D monster. And how can you make that in Scratch with as few lines as code as possible? That's the challenge for today. What's the least code we can do to make a very simple version of Minecraft that students would recognize? And even if it's not perfect, it would be a good place to start. So we're going to create this simple 2D Minecraft in Scratch. Firstly, I better get drawing. I have to admit, drawing is not my strongest suit. But here we go, get going. Even here you can see a little bit of quick trickery, off we go, make things nice and large, and it makes it easier for you to look at. Okay, and uh, there I go, look at that. My mouse skills are definitely improved there. So we've made the dirt, getting it done, sorting it out nicely. Um, so the first block I'm going to call terrain. Now, let's um, work on the cloning process. For this, I need to, at the beginning, put everything in the right place, move it along. So I move it along row by row so that it creates the Minecraft world. Yep, oh, that's looking, yeah, not, not quite, but getting there. Not too bad, not too bad. Now this is going to take a little bit of adjustment, uh, just playing with the numbers to get them right, so there's no gaps, but there's no overlap. You want as few of these as you can get away with, otherwise it slows down Scratch if you have too many things uh, copied. So the cloning process. Right. So the first thing I'm now putting the code together and it's uh, coming along nicely. Managed to get my first row done. So I'm just gonna copy that and do the second row and then the third row. It's starting to look good now. Now, as I say, please, a bit like a recipe, don't take these numbers too seriously. Depending on the blocks you make, you might find that you have different skills. Let's have a little look at that code while we're here. So. Please remember there will be a document with all the code, but it's nice for you to see and it's nice for you to have a look at that. What I really like for you is to have a real go at this and see if you can do it yourself without just copying my blocks. So what I've done now is I've produced the blocks. Next trick. Now this is one of the most difficult things for me. The next bit is gonna be challenging. I gotta do some more drawing. So just tidying this up nicely so the third row works up. Okay, and you're starting to see I'm just doing those adjustments, making sure everything is okay. Right now for a bit of uh, drawing. I'm gonna have to say, uh, obviously I'm super fast at drawing, or rather I'm so slow that uh, it takes a long time. So you're just gonna see me make the blocks for this. Um, it took me a while. As I say, my drawing skills aren't the best in the world, so. But you know, I think I made a good go, I'll give it a little go. Those eyes are tricky to get in the right spot though. Um, take a while. I just couldn't get them quite in the right space. Yep, he's looking good. Oh, perfect. Just a little bit more and he's job done. Look at that. Made a bit thinner. Zoomed in down a bit so he matched with the size of the thing. Now I'm going to make him move. For those of you who are familiar with Scratch, this is very standard code. A lot of people often ask me, why, why do you use the green flags? That's because if you use the other function, he can move with or without the green flag being pressed. And it's important that you start the game, it sets up and then he's able to move rather than messes around in the beginning. So as you can see, 
Now I'm using the WASD for my controls, which I know everybody in Minecraft will know inside out, because that's the way you do it. And then I'm adding the up. My Minecraft guy is just going to be able to fly. This is definitely a creative mode. If I get a lot more subscriptions on my channel, I'll show you how to deal with zombies and things, but uh, I think that's for another day. I was in half a mind to um, make putting gravity and things, but then I realized it's not as fun. You can't draw things as easily if you can't fly around and, and control things. So that's the movement. Yeah, he's able to move around. Only thing is, can't do anything with the blocks right now. So next, and this is in two parts. Notice how I'm showing you that this part of the code is on Steve. You can see the diagram in my caption. So this is to clear blocks, and this half is the Steve half. You do have to do a little bit of broadcasting, So I've called this broadcast disappear, in other words for the block to disappear. And there you go, all nicely done. Right now this half has to be put into the terrain. As I said before, if you need to look at the blocks you can either look at the end of the video or you can have a look at the document which I will include in the YouTube. It would be even better if you just take this as an inspiration and make your own code. So again, this is on the terrain half of things. And let's see. Fingers crossed. Are we going to be able to do it then? Is it? Hey, it works. So this is with spacebar, admittedly. Not exactly the same as the control mechanism. But it makes it a lot easier if we just use spacebar for this. So... Looking good, I can clear the blocks. So Steve can now get rid of the dirt. I almost think that's worth a mini celebration. Being able to get rid of dirt is important. So just a little bit of a tidy up there just to sort things out a bit. So yeah, you can see all working okay over there. Now the next part is to add the train. So just be aware of this. So how do you make the dirt? So don't forget this is being done in the terrain half of things. Now we can actually make dirt and it's going through okay. That's looking good. So not only can I destroy dirt, I can make dirt is really handy. Now this bit is to change the costume so you can make multiples. Now I've done a super basic version with just two block types but you could put as many block types in as you like and you wouldn't even need any extra code to add those block types so that's a really cool function. So you can see now you can make the blocks and all you do is you have to click um, to change the costume type. Very simple code, makes it quite easy. Now, there are many, many extensions for this project. I could have an inventory, um, I could add gravity, I could make it so that you had to jump, um, many, many fun things that you could do. But what I like is that this is just gonna make, this is probably the simplest code I think you can get away with, just like my simple platformer, to make a creative mode in uh, Minecraft. If you know of a method which uses even less code, I'd be very interested in that. That would be uh, very interested indeed. I have seen some methods using drawing and stamps, but I felt this is the kind of code that would be easy for most people to understand, and it's a lot of fun. 
There is just one thing, I'm not so keen on this white background. I think I might have to sort that out. So just a little bit. I, I like to have a little blue. And what I love about this is, is that you can really do gradients and also makes it look really professional. And as somebody who was uh, born in the days of very, very few colors and a computer, um, those gradients were the latest newfangled thing. And I was a bit jealous of those people who had an Amiga, the Commodore Amiga, so there's a bit of a shout out for that. So this is the Commodore Amiga moment, being able to see a gradient. So really, this isn't an 8-bit program, it's very much a 16-bit program with that beautiful gradient about to come my way. I think you're, gonna, you're absolutely going to love this gradient. It is, it is the stuff of legend. What a beautiful, sunshiny day. So, there you go. All looks good. So let's have one little final look. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I can get rid of blocks, I can add blocks. This is awesome. I don't die of lava. Mind you, you could add that very easily. Dying of lava, now that would be funny. You know, at the bottom, red, kill you off nicely. You could even pour lava in. Be lots of fun, that. But um, I think as the bare bones thing, as a place for you to get some inspiration, I think this is quite fun. I think there's a lot you can do. And I like the fact that I've created something that you can see the potential for this idea. Now, if that went by a little bit fast, and for some of you who are familiar with Scratch, I'm sure it didn't, but for those of you who don't, well, firstly, you can pause the video at the right place and have a look, but secondly, I have uh, put a doc in the comments so that you can see the code. And worst case, you know, you can just hit the remix button. Again, I will put it in. This is really for Easter fun, uh, rather than uh, too serious for teaching. Um, it will appear in my A-level class, but I've got a bit of a sting in the tail for them, so I can't spoil that in this video. It's just so exciting. Thank you very much.